Today we will start with rational, relational database design using normalization. Now let us just talk of some informal guidelines for, a, for the design of the relational schemas. First being making sure that the semantics of the attributes is clear in the schema. That is that if we have a relational schema let us say A with the set of attributes A, B, C, T then it should be the semantics of the attributes should be clear that what do the attributes indicate and why the attributes have been included in this relational schema. The second important requirement is reducing the redundancy of information in the tuples that is there should be minimum redundancy in the tuples obviously we may not be able to achieve zero redundancy but it should be the minimum possible and also it is important to have the minimum null values in the tuples. So, for a good quality design of a relational schema we need to consider these three properties and then when we study the design of the relational schema using normalization we will focus on these three guidelines that are there. Now, let us talk of what are anomalies in a database. A, purely, a poorly designed database will always result into some anomalies leading to inconsistency of the data in the database. The three kinds of anomalies that exist in the database design if it is not a good design are the insertion anomalies, the deletion anomalies and the modification anomalies. Insertion anomalies means any anomalies that may occur at the time of inserting the data in the database. Deletion anomalies, any anomalies that they may occur at the time of deletion of the data from the database and modification anomalies means the anomalies that may occur at the time of modification of data in the database. To understand the insertion anomaly, let us consider we have the attributes SSN, ename, city, DNO, DNAME and D manager and we take two designs, two relational schema or two designs for the same set of the attributes that is one being employee department and the other being two different relations employee and department that is all the attributes they have been divided into two different relations. Now, let us see what happens when we try to insert data into these two into these two sets of relation schemas. In the first case let us see let us say any instance of employee department is this the instance of employee is this and the instance of department is this again I am repeating this is one design and this is the second design which is containing two relations the attributes or the set of the attributes is the same. Now, we will consider two cases insertion of a new employee and insertion of a new department. Now, let us say I want to insert a new employee over here in the first case I have S4 let the name of the employee be Ajay let his city be Delhi let the department of the employee be let us say he is in department D1 we will have to say D1 is CS and the manager of D1 is S1. So, now what happens when we are inserting the data over here in the case of an employee what is happening over here is that we have to insert this information CS and S1 corresponding to D1 redundantly. We are having all this information as redundantly at three places we are saying D1 C S S1, D1 C S S1, D1 C S S1. Whereas, in this case if we want to add this employee sorry this was S5 if we want to employ S5 RJ Delhi and we will simply enter the D number we do not have to repeat the 
D name and the D manager of the employee. So, obviously, this will be a better because inserting this it will cause redundancy and there can be errors also. Now, the second case I said I will consider is insertion of a new department. Let us say we have a new department D4 to be inserted. The name of the department is E n and let us say S 3 is the manager number and now we have just formed a new department. There are no employees in the department. So, what will we write over here? Null, null, null. So, that means we just said in the previous slide that we do not want too many null values. So, we are unnecessarily inserting null values over here. Whereas, in this case if I insert Mm, if I insert D4, I simply have to write E n and S 3 and I do not have to write anything else. So, obviously, we will say that this the second case we are where we are splitting all the attributes into two relations is a better database design because it is there are no insertion anomalies. Now, for the same let us look at the deletion an anomalies if we delete from employed department and employee. Let us say I want to delete the employee S 3 from here. What happens? I delete this. Okay. D 3 is also deleted. Why? Because S 3 was the last employee in the department D 3 and we have deleted the record for S 3. That means, in our database X th uh, sorry S 3 is no longer D 3 sorry is no longer existing. Whereas, in this case if we delete we can easily delete the sorry I am sorry I wanted to delete an employee I want I had deleted S 3 over here I can simply delete the record for the employee S 3. So, again we see in the uh, deletion anomalies can occur if we have a relation of this type. Then let us come to the modification anomaly. Let us say in the employee department if we change the value of one of the attributes of the department say a manager of the department. So, over here let us say I want to change the manager of the department D 1. I want to make S 3 the manager. So, I have to do it here. I have to do it here and I have to do it here at three places. So, again at the time of modifications we have to change the data at more than one place and that can again cause some errors and the data can be in an inconsistent state. Whereas, in this case if I want to change the manager of this I simply have to do it at one place. So, whenever we design a database, we have to reduce the insertion, modification and the deletion anomalies. So, now let us see what is normalization. In order to ensure a good database design, we follow a process which is called normalization. What do we do in normalization? It takes the relation schema through a series of tests to certify whether it satisfies a given normal form. If it does not satisfy the normal form, then in a top down fashion after evaluating we decompose the relations as may be necessary and this is what is called normalization. That is first we will check the given relation against some normal forms. If it does not meet the criteria for the normal forms, then we will decompose the relation into more relations that is break it into more relations and this is called normalization. Normalization was introduced by E F Cord in 72 giving three normal forms, the first normal form, second normal form and the third normal form. Then he introduced with then he introduced <coughs> with uh, boys a new normal form which is a stricter form of 3 nf uh, 3 nf called the boy score normal form the second third and the boy score normal form they are based on an analytical tool which is called a functional dependency after that 
two more normal forms, the fourth normal form based on multivalue dependencies and the fifth normal form based on joint dependencies were introduced and we will be studying all these normal forms in detail. I have already told you the second normal form, third normal form and the Boyce chord normal form are based on functional dependencies, multivalued fourth normal form, joint dependencies they lead to the fifth normal form. So, normalization of data is a process of analyzing the given relation schema based on the dependencies and the primary key and decomposing the relations to achieve the desirable properties of minimizing the redundancies and minimizing the insertion deletion and the modification or update anomalies. Now, we said second, third and fourth normal form sorry second, third and the boy scout normal form they are based on the functional dependency. Let us see what a functional dependency means. A functional dependency first let me tell you is given by x to y we read it as and where x can be a set of attributes that is one or more attributes and y is a set of attributes one or more attributes. A functional dependency is a constraint between two sets of attributes x and y. A functional dependency x to y that is this is said to hold if the values of the y component in any state of a relation depend upon or are determined by the values of the x component. Now, let us see what this means. We have this relation over here. Now, we see Amit Delhi 55,000 is the salary. Amit Delhi 55,000 is the salary. Now, if I say Amit who lives in Delhi with salary 55,000, which Amit? We do not know. Why? Because these two records, if we do not look at the employee number are the same. So, we do not know which Amit, but the moment I say Amit with employee number E 1, we immediately know it is this Amit or if I say Amit with employee number 3, we immediately know it is this Amit. So, this is what a functional dependency is because employee number over here with the employee number we immediately know the values of employee name city and the salary and we say in this case the employee number determines employee name, it determines city and it determines salary and this is what is called a functional dependency. We will say employee number determines employee name, employee number determines city and employee number determines salary or we can also put it like number determines employee name comma city comma salary and this is what a functional dependency is. A functional dependency between two attribute set is given by x 2 y I have told you the left hand side is called the determinant and the left hand side uh, sorry right hand side is called the dependent both in x and y can be single attributes or the combination of more than one attribute. This is again we have this relation S S N P N O the key is S S N P N O R's name P name P location. So, we have the functional dependency S S N determines name why from the S S N S S N is going to be unique we clearly know the name of the person. P number determines the name of the project and the location of the project and S S N P N O together determines ours. Let me give you an example of this. 
this is the key. So, S S N 1 is working on project P 1 for 3 hours, 2 is working on project P 2 for 3 hours, 1 is again working on project P 3 for 1 hour and 2 is working on project 3 for 2 hours. So, every time we see S S N P N O is unique and this combination determines how many hours a person is working on a project. A formal definition of the functional dependency says that x functionally determines y in a relation if and only if whenever two tuples of the state of R agree on their x values, whenever two tuples agree on their x values, then they must necessarily agree on the y values also. For example, if I say over here S S n, sorry I will take name over here. So, if two tuples agree on the x value, then they must necessarily agree on the y value also. That means, every time S S n is 1, the name is going to be Amit. This is the formal definition of functional dependency. Let us consider this example. Here we have Smith, Smith. These two tuples, the first and the second tuples, they are agreeing on the x value, but in the course they are not agreeing on the in the course they are not agreeing between the two upper tuples, the value is not the same, in the text the value is not the same. So, we say that the functional dependency teacher to course, teacher to course does not exist and the functional dependency teacher to text does not exist. But now let us look at this case we have d s as course, d s as course and over here a in both the tuples. So, the functional dependency which is course to text exists, but the functional dependency course to teacher. Why? Because now the name of the teacher is different in the different tuples. So, the functional dependency sorry course to teacher does not exist. So, this is what a functional dependency is. Now, inference of functional dependencies. Look, when any database is designed, then the database designer will give a set of functional dependencies, which are clear from the semantics of the schema. That means, in this case we have seen from here we can clearly say given the schema and the keys that these are the functional dependencies that may be existing. So, whenever we have a database designer designing a database, he will give some set of functional dependencies. However, in the legal states of the relation schema, there may be different functional dependencies depending upon the data. So, that means we can say that whenever a relational schema is defined, we may have some functional dependencies, but in addition to these, we there may be even more functional dependencies. And where will these more functional dependencies come? They can be inferred or deduced from the given set of the functional dependencies. And in real life examples, it is practically impossible to specify all the functional dependencies that may be present. For example, over here let us see, we are given this set of functional dependencies. S S N determines E name, birth date, address and D number and D number determines D name and D manager number. I have decomposed the right hand side over here. SSN determines E name, SSN determines birth date, SSN determines address, SSN determines D number, D number determines D name and D number determines D manager. Please be careful, we said both the left and the right hand side, they can be one or more attributes for the functional dependencies. We can decompose the right hand side, but we cannot decompose the left hand side. Okay, so, I have decomposed the right hand side. Now, we have S S N determines D number, 
and d number determines d name. So, from transitivity we can transitivity we can say that S S n determines d name, S S n determines d name. So, I have S S n determines d name and S S n also determines in a similar manner d manager. So, we can say the here that from transitivity we have seen that the functional dependency S S n to d name and S S n to d manager can be derived from the given set of functional dependencies. Now, we have what is the closure of the set of functional dependencies. We just said that we can have some specified functional dependencies and some implied functional dependencies. So, if f is a set of functional dependencies given on a relation schema R, then the closure of f will include all the specified or the given functional dependencies and all the implied or the deduced functional dependencies and is given by f plus, where f plus is a superset of f. Another term a trivial functional dependency, a trivial functional dependency means if x to y is a functional dependency, then it is said to be trivial if y is a subset of x. In this case, roll number name, this is x, this is y. So, roll number name, so name is a subset of the left hand side, hence it is a trivial functional dependency. Another example of a trivial functional dependency is this and we will use trivial functional dependencies quite often. Now, we just said that the functional dependencies they can be inferred from the given set of functional dependencies. These are some of the rules for inference. The reflexive rule if x is a superset of y then x determines y. Augmentation rule if x to y is given then we can augment any attribute on both the sides. Transitive we have already done an example x to y, y to z implies x to z. Decomposition rule we can decompose the right hand side that is x to y z means x to y and x to z. Union means x to y, x to z we have x on the left hand side of both the functional dependencies. So, we can join the right hand side and the pseudo transitive rule means if x to y w y to z then w x to z. So, these are the rules that can be used to infer the additional functional dependencies. Now, the closure of the functional dependencies we just said it is all the given functional de dependencies and all the implied functional dependencies. So, it is simple how can we find the closure? Database designers they first specify the set of functional dependencies that can be given from the semantics of the attributes. Then applying the inference rules the additional functional dependencies can be deduced. For example, let us see over here we have this as the given set of functional dependencies. For the relation schema R with the attributes a, b, c, g, h, i. Agreed? a to b, a to c, c, g to h, c, g to i and b to h. Now, consider a to h. We have, where do I, I got a to h I say is a, imp, is a implied or a deduced functional dependency. How? I have a to b over here and I have b to h over here. So, by applying transitivity to a to b and b to h, I get what? I get a to h. Similarly, I have a to c and I have I have c g to and I have c g to i. So, augment a to c with g, though no side pe we can augment. So, I have a g to c g and I have already given to me c g to i. So, what do I get? I get a g to i. So, similarly over here c g to h i 
can be obtained by augmenting C g to i to n for C g to C g i that means, augment on both sides and augmenting of C g to h to n for C g i to h i from here we will get C g to h i. So, we see that in this way we can deduce the functional dependencies from the given set of functional dependencies, but since we said there may be many functional dependencies that will be there which can be implied from the given set of functional dependencies. Hence, it may be difficult to deduce the functional dependencies like this and a proper algorithm may be required to do this. And what is that? We a systematic way to determine the additional functional dependencies is by using the closure of the attribute set. What does the closure of the attribute set means that if I have a functional dependency x to y, then the closure of x, closure of x will be all those attributes which can be determined by x, right. That is set of all the attributes that are dependent on x or can be determined by x. For example, let us look at this example we are given R A B C D E and we are given the functional dependencies A B to C D, A B C D, A B C to E and C to E. Now, let us see from the given set of functional dependencies what are the derived functional dependencies that we can achieve. We will take the closure we have x to y is the generic form. So, in every functional dependency we will take the closure of the left hand side. That means, in the first functional dependency a b to c d I will take the closure of a b which will be a b, a b is dependent on a b. Now, this becomes a b c d y because we have a b determines c d and this becomes a b c d e because a b c determines e. So, therefore, we have a b determines a b c d e, this is a trivial functional dependency a b determines a b. So, we have a b determines c d e, right. Now, let us look at the second functional dependency a b c determines <coughs> e. So, we will find the closure of a b c which is a b c it becomes a b c d why does it become a b c d because given is a b determines c d given is a b c determines e. So, we get a b c d e a b c determines a b c trivial. So, we have over here that sorry a b determines d e closure of c in this case will be c e and we will have C determines E. Similarly, closure. So, we have taken the closure of A B, we have taken the closure of A B C and we have taken the closure of C. So, in this case we see that the closure of the given set of functional dependencies is A B to C D E, A B C to A B C to A B C to sorry this was correct A B C to D E C to E okay, which is also if we decompose the right hand side A B to C A B to D A B to E A B to E A B C to D A B C to E and C to A which is the closure F plus. So, in this way using what we call as what we call as the closure of the attribute sets, we can determine the additional functional dependency. We're sorry, I am sorry, we can determine the additional functional dependencies and hence the closure of the attribute sets. These are the references that we have for this topic. Thank you.